Now, I want to talk a minute about Christ on the cross, the Passover. I'm not going to focus on the amount of damage that he took and the torture he had to go through. We all know that. But on the cross, he says this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have we read that? Do you know where that shows up first? In Psalm 22. Jesus is quoting this on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our father trusted you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried, and you were delivered. They trusted you, and were not ashamed. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by all people. Now we can see that this is Christ, right? And go home and read the entire thing. Of Psalm 22, it's powerful. We're going to come back to it, but I want to stop for a minute and talk about this worm thing. Why did he call himself a worm? Most teachings think because he set himself lower than man. That, that's true to, a, to an aspect, but all animals are below men. Right? Man has given dominion over the earth, so he could have called himself a rabbit, and that would have been below man. But he picked a worm. And it's not because it's gross. If he'd have wanted something gross, he'd have picked a roach or something like that. A maggot. Or, you know, but he picked a worm. So, I did study on this. And most of you probably won't care to see this or can see it, but this is the original Hebrew. The word worm right there is tola'at. It's in the Strong's. That's 8438. That's the word that was used there. That's not the traditional worm, word for worm, like a maggot type worm. This is a specific type of worm. And right here, it means crimson, purple, or worm. It is also used in Exodus when the people gathered too much manna and it developed worms. It was this worm. A specific one. God didn't want them gathering too much manna. He wanted them to trust him. So I'm going to send a worm to destroy all the overstock that you got. And it's going to be that worm. So what does this mean? That is the crimson worm. Or the cocos ilcus. The cocos worm. I'm going to talk a minute about this. Because he referred to himself as this particular worm. This is a picture of it. This is a picture of it in its cocoon stage. Okay? It sticks up on the branches there. Here's some more pictures. They're really tiny. They almost look like sea, some kind of sea animal, but these are all these cocos worms. Now, what they do in Israel, they harvest these. Does so anybody know when they harvest snails to get the blue color for the threads? used to take snails out of water and if you opened them up in the daylight it would give you either a purple or a blue dye and they would use that for their robes. These they would harvest to get a crimson color. So this is actually going on right now in Israel. This is a guy who sticks one of these worms right there in boiling water and it ultimately starts turning red. Okay. Now we're going to go through this and pay attention because understand who Christ is, what he did for us, what he said to us, what he said at the Last Supper, and think about this. The Hebrew word for worm is ramah, which means maggot. But the Hebrew word Jesus used for worm was tola'ath, which means crimson or scarlet worm. It looks more like a grub than a worm anyway. 
when it is time for the crimson worm to reproduce, which it only does one time in its life, it finds the trunk of a tree or a wooden fence post or a stick. It then attaches its body to the wood and makes a hard crimson shell. It is so strongly and permanently stuck to the wood that the shell cannot be removed without tearing its body completely apart or killing it. You can already see where this is going, right? The crimson worm lays its eggs under its body as a protective shell. When the larvae hatch, they stay under the shell. The mother's body gives protection for her babies and also provides them with food, which is her own living body. And what does Christ say? Take and eat. This is my body. I am the worm. Take and drink. This is my blood. I am the worm. After a few days of feeding on the living mother's body, the young worms grow and the mothers die. It then secretes a crimson or red dye that stains the wood it's attached to and covers the young. The scarlet covering protects them from predators and it stains them red for the rest of their lives. Christ has said, I am the worm. I am the scarlet worm. I will protect my kids. They take and eat. This is my body. And when I die, my blood will cover you. I will protect you from predators. We're not done yet. 1 John, if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ, his son, cleansed from all sin. After dying to give life to its children, something amazing takes place. For a period of three days, the worm can be scraped from the tree, and the crimson gel can be used to make a dye. This dye was the same dye used in the tabernacle and the garments of the high priest. For three days, you could harvest this dead worm, and they would take the dye, and it would actually be the covering of the Old Testament tabernacle. It was red. And they also used it in the garments of the high priest. That's just a coincidence. Right? For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. By the morning of the fourth day, when the worm has pulled its head and tail together, it now is in the shape of a heart. And it starts losing its crimson color and is now turning into a wax, which is white like snow. And what does Jesus say in Psalm 22? I am poured out like water. All of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. And then in Isaiah, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they are now white as snow. For they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I am the worm. Everything he did was right there in the life cycle, and we can see everything in God in nature. This is why he said, I am this worm. I will feed my children with my body. I will protect them and cover them with my blood. It shall protect them against predators until they can stand on their own. And then they can harvest the blood because I'll be the high priest and their scarlet sins will be white as snow. Did you ever heard that before? You know, it's not an accident. You can't make this up and all you got to do is, you know, see it. It's so much more than him saying I'm lower than man. He was giving you an example, a physical example. And they would have known that because this worm grows in the Middle East. It grows in Israel. They're harvesting it now. Those pictures I showed you of them mixing it in the water, that's from the Temple Institute. Now, these Jews don't believe that Christ is the Messiah. They're trying to build the third temple. They're making the garments for the high priest. They're harvesting this worm because they know this worm, if we gather it within three days after its death, we can color our high priest robe red. 
This is Jews doing this today. You know, God knew. He, he hides himself in plain sight in nature. We just got to see it. Right? So, we can stop there, but we ain't done yet. Right? 